Hello guys, this is Linus Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. Today I'm going to visit a park not far away from my town and to make and to activate the FT8. So, but for that I need weather, which might be might be not that good today. Okay, we will see. Stand by. Nice driveway. Nice woods around. Birds singing. And not so many people. So that's my setup for today. FT8 Expedition, ICOM IC705, Antenna Tuner Elecraft T1, very important MFJ RF choke filter, and Chewy mini laptop computer. Everything is mounted very compact, so the transceiver is put onto the reinforced car table, the rear seat foldable car table. I made it unfoldable and reinforced with the, with the plastic chopping board. Normally it's, it's a, a, a rear, seat, rear seat table like this, but it's, you know, it's not very reliable. It's just very folding very easily. So maybe it's due to the road safety, but uh, but yeah, I don't take passengers in, in in this seat while I'm driving if my reinforced table is on, so that's not a problem. Otherwise, it's very convenient, small office. So a short coax cable from my shack from the transceiver goes to the. 9 to 1 Anon. So my antenna today is 43 foot and fat uh, long wire antenna which comes which starts uh, from this pine tree lower branch at about 8 meter high and it goes down to the roof rack of my car and from the same point on the roof rack on the car which is uh, which is a nine to one anon transformer. The counterpoise, the elevated counterpoise, comes right to this hole. All right. So before we start operating, one more thing to test uh, to uh, to check is um, the GPS. We see that the GPS icon is still, it means that the GPS receiver of the transceiver IC705 has locked on the, on the satellites and just we can check how is it doing. Are we really in the right park? <laughs> Let's check the GPS, GPS position. And now we see that, right, we are in the right park. Kilo Oscar 24, Quebec, Quebec. Altitude around 140 meters above the sea level, not so high, but still. And then we can check uh, GPS information. So we see that nine satellites bring this information to us, and that's fine. And yet one more important thing is uh, to see what's the time difference uh, we have in the WSJTX program and we see very good uh, DT indicator time difference is just 0 0.1 0 0.2 0, 0 seconds it means that the uh, GPS clock is fed successfully to my computer and to the program through the BKT time sync program it's a very nice piece of software. The, there is a link in the description in this video, and it's another video the, which I done 
uh, earlier and there will be all the details how to install the BKT TimeSync uh, software and how to get uh, your uh, PC clock synced uh, with a precise time being in the fields not having internet access and not having uh, let's say the cell phone uh, coverage which you could use at a, uh, you, which you could use at a hotspot uh, for your computer so the GPS now helped a lot so we have very nice difference in time in synchronization that's good so after the tuning attempt we got the error a recontrol error and whatsoever something something clearly indicating that the, the, there is an RF impact onto the computer. Uh, my USB cable is well equipped with the ferrite filters. Uh, four of them are clamped onto the cable and the cable itself probably is not, uh, not, really, uh, not really the reason, I guess so. So the only thing to know is to employ the uh, RF choke my trusty good old MFJ915 915RF choke. It's very old, maybe 15 years old, but it's still fully functioning. And let's try uh, to put it just right after the transceiver and we see if we see any difference. All right, so now the RF choke filter is installed right after the antenna tuner and uh, let's go to let's say 20 meter band okay the cat works and now just let's get ready to tune and see if we have this rf in the shack effect on 20 meters it was okay on 40 meters so let's Push the tune. Okay, so we got achieved a very good tune, less than 1.5, and nothing happened with the computer. So it's tuned, we can test, transmit the test signal the Fulton watt power output so let's hope this is gonna be okay FG8 mode is just pretty lazy one you just sit and wait sit and wait all these periods of transmission and receive transceiver works nice issuing full 10 watts power fed from my Portable battery, 12 amp hours, lithium iron phosphate, very good, homemade battery, very good, very reliable. Antenna tuner is Elecraft T1 with the RF choke by MFJ, which is essential. RF choke is essential in these situations because otherwise I would, uh, I would have an enormous RF in the shack effect and the computer would stuck and will be not possible to work digital modes where you need a computer. So now I got the first contact, Oscar Zulu 8 Bravo Lima Radio calls me. I hear him plus 4 dBs. I wonder. All right. He gives me minus 22. Oh, but still the contact is good, is valid. Finished, confirmed. Yeah, good. All right, I try now to move on 30 meter band, make some tuning. The tuner tunes. And voila, we have around 1.5 on 30 meters with this 13.5 meter long antenna wire. Sugar 55G, Slovenian station. I called him, he's very strong. And voila, we made a contact. He answered me. 
giving me minus 20. It's pretty weak. I think this antenna, 13.5 meters long, should be okay, but uh, it, it tunes nicely on all bands. But I see that my signal reports are pretty, uh, pretty low ones. Lima X-ray one, Charlie, Charlie, Luxembourgian station calls me. I copy him minus seven dBs. I wonder how about him? All right, he copied me minus 11 dBs. Perfect. Good low power to low power QSO. Delta Lima 4 Echo Alpha Mike Station. Oscar Mike 3 Charlie Nancy Delta. Well, it's kind of a pile up, I would say. <laughs> One station called me after the other station. He copies me minus 13. Okay, that's not strong signal, but still, I'm only running 10 watts into a very, very modest antenna, so that's fine. Strangely enough, suddenly I started getting some strong cure mexico so this is strong strong qrm i got on the frequency and i don't know where it comes from i'm i'm pretty far away from town in the park in the woods there is no power lines around so it happens Definitely it's not me making this. So because of this QRM, I don't think I, I, I can work anymore on 30 meters. All right, we're now on 17 meters. Let's try the tuning. Push and release, and now we have to push tune. All right. It's tuned 1.2. All right, mine alpha two kilo sugar. Creation station giving me minus 19 dB report and I give him plus 10 dB all right and we're stuck as it as it happens on FT8 mode I don't know I don't know why it happens but it it happens quite often when you just uh, both both stations receive each other would be pretty good, but then this endless exchange of reports and never coming to an end. Finally, we managed to finish a QSO with 9 alpha 2 kilo sugar station, and that's very good. All right, Papa Alpha 3 Golf Echo Golf, Netherlands. Answered very quickly. At the moment, I'm calling stations, despite being me being activator, but somehow not many people coming back to my CQ. But on 17 meters today is pretty surprisingly good propagation. So I call stations which all are new on my on my uh, uh, WSDTX screen and on this band. So it's a good. It's a good practice to collect new stations, new new countries for me. Operating outdoors today. Okay, we finished contact with the station from Netherlands. Very good. Yeah, what I like about ICOM IC705, it's uh, the menu called meters. When you go in this menu, you, you, you see this on the screen. All the meters possible just to easily follow and checking the uh, the uh, SWR, the, uh, the current draw, the voltage, the temperature. For instance, I see that, you know, I'm operating almost two hours continuously on FT8. It, 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 it means 15 seconds transmit, 15 seconds receive, and that's all the time. And it's still cool, it's not even warm. So that's that's very good running full time uh, running full 10 watt power output. So what's a little bit uh, kind of a drawback? It's a very primitive uh, voltage reader, a voltage meter. It just uh, starts with five and finishes with with 16. And uh, 
what's what's the voltage now i can only guess so i think it's still around 13 volts because i know i know my battery was fully charged but uh, i would be i would be much more happy if, if uh, the voltage meter on this uh, radio would be more precise you know that, that that i could read the precise voltage of the current sta status of the uh, of the battery all right guys with this nice view of the park and this nice view of my radio shack in the car and operator running it i coming to an end of my story about activating a park on FT8 mode. I don't know whether it was a success from the point of number of QSOs. I made a few, more than 10 on various bands, but uh, probably, uh, I, I have a suspicion that probably the FT8 mode is not yet that popular among the parks, chasers and park activators as it is popular in everyday in everyday QSO making, everyday ham radio activities. So, but anyway, I had tons of fun. I tested my, my 43 foot, 13.5 meters long antenna uh, in the configuration uh, which was fed through the nine to one Anon with the one elevated radial. Uh, it worked uh, very nicely. It tuned on all bands. Uh, actually from 80 to 10 even though I haven't made uh, co made contacts on all of these bands but still it's pretty usable with no problem so it's a very good uh, travel antenna very good compact antenna I've learned some lessons about RF in the shack and how to get rid of this unpleasant phenomena so the RF choke is a key word uh, anytime you go outdoors uh, I would recommend take an RF choke with you either manufacturer made or it's easy to make it yourself just a few turns on the ferrite core and the ferrite torrid core in the, in the in the simplest way please leave your comments like if you liked subscribe if you feel like so and if you would like to know to be the first to know what's coming next on my channel so that's it for today thanks for watching again 73 good luck this is linas lima yankee 2 hotel